Hi again, everybody. I'm Dan Horde, along with Bearcats head football coach Luke Fickle. Spring football ended on April 14th. Today we're going to take a look at where things stand for the Bearcats. And coach, let's start with one observation that I had during spring football. You spent a lot of time on the field. Was it a conscious decision to spend more time on the field and less time in a classroom this year? It was. Um, we tried, you know, again, a little bit something different. We thought evaluating the whole season, the big deal was, hey, we got to become better football players. And to me, the only way to become better football players on the field. So a lot of those things, even um, walkthroughs and different things like that, we wanted to be able to do more on the football field. So you're talking a good three, three hours, three hours plus, which then obviously had to shorten the meeting times and things like that. But just want guys to get more accustomed to, to things they do on the football field and then together. Because when you get in the classroom, a lot of times you're done in nine or ten different units and you don't have all that connection together as, uh, as you would on the football field. So the thought process, yes, play more football, be out there longer, but also guys working together a lot more. We'll get to some specific names in just a bit, but from a big picture standpoint, was there a most positive thing, something that you thought was the very best uh, thing that came out of spring football? Well, I I think it starts with just building football players in general. And, and you can evaluate that in many different ways. But um, to see how those guys, I think they kind of really enjoyed it. You know, that, you know, sometimes it takes more for an 18 to 22-year-old to sit in a meeting room and, and work for, for 45 minutes or an hour before they go out on the field. It takes a lot more energy as opposed to getting them on the field where they get kind of the energy going. They get a little bit of a sweat going. Uh, I think it really helps the concentration level. So. Uh, when I evaluated that, I kind of looked like, hey, I think we're maturing more as football players. Uh, so we had the ability to do I don't think we could have had the ability to do that last year, them not knowing us, not knowing them. Um, but I see the, the maturity as a football team and football players, I think, growing. Let's talk quarterbacks. Ross Trail elected to transfer near the end of spring uh, practice. Where do things stand at that position? Well, we've got a few of them. Um, but I, I think that... The, the whole idea is competition. Obviously, Hayden has, has played a lot of football for us. I think he really ended up being the guy um, at the end of spring. Uh, he's had, he had a good spring. Um, but I think the ability for those young guys to get a lot of reps, it was you know, kind of what happened with Ross. We, we kind of went into the spring saying, hey, we're going to have to give these young guys, meaning Desmond Ritter and Ben Bryant, a lot of extra reps. And Hayden understood that. Ross understood that. Jake Sopko understood that. Um, just the sheer fact that, hey, these guys haven't had as many opportunities as you guys will balance. But with five guys in spring, it makes it difficult. So um, the ability to get those young guys a lot of reps, I think, was really, a, really good for us and, and good for them in their growth. So Hayden start, you know, kind of finished off as where he has been, um, you know, but as the Desmond Ritter develops and Jake Sobko develop and, and Ben Bryant, I think we've seen a lot of things that are going to create, you know, some more of that competition. Uh, what I like to refer to as healthy competition amongst the unit. Ben Bryant could still be a high school senior. And you had a few guys that went through spring practice uh, that that's true of Malik Van from Fairfield High School and a running back named Charles McClellan from Georgia. Van and McClellan in particular, do you expect them to play right off the bat? Yes. And, I mean, again, it, it's a big benefit to come in in the spring. Those guys, um, Malik in particular, very mature beyond his years. I think that it was a great opportunity for him actually being a little bit more local. Um, but really, it, it changed a lot of the things. His body and a lot of things in those first three months of being here uh, with Coach Collins and those guys in the weight room, which I think led to his ability to, to perform pretty well on, on the field. Um, a guy that we moved around a little bit but found a little bit of a home as the field side in and can, is different from Kamani Fitz and some of those other guys at that spot. So I really feel like his opportunity is, is uh, you know, in, in that mix of eight guys is really going to help us um, in this fall in particular. Charles is a little bit different, you know, coming from South Georgia, not exactly sure, you know, he's going to walk in and I don't know if it's going to be a bigger surprise, the speed of the game or the weather outside. <laughs> so he was a... a not a surprise, but I think just the way he handled everything uh, was very, very positive. I mean, a guy that in our big scrimmage, I think got 84 snaps mm -hmm. of live ball, um, which doesn't always happen because, you know, usually you got depth at running back positions, but the uniqueness with guys with shoulder injuries and some things like that really kind of thrust him in there and I think really gave us an opportunity as well as the entire team and program to see what he does bring different than what the Mike Warrens and Jared Dokes can bring. Those three incoming freshmen are already here. 
uh, at a scrimmage that you held at Paul Brown Stadium, many of the other incoming freshmen were standing on the sideline, many of the local kids, including Josh Wiley, the tight end from LaSalle High School. Do you expect a significant number of those guys to contribute right off the bat? I do. And, I mean, time will tell. Uh, there's always those different, you know, things happen, injuries and, and things like that. But I think just knowing those guys, knowing their maturity level, uh, having that opportunity to recruit those guys for a full year, I really feel like we've got some guys in that class that are going to help us. Um, where at, we don't know just yet. Josh being one of those guys in particular, you know, really like our tight end group. I mean, we can get into that, but there's only three deep there. And to have a guy that can come in there that's going to be different. I think that's one of those unique things. Uh, Charles McClellan's kind of like that. It's just he's different from the other three or four guys there. Josh is going to walk in. It's going to be different than the other three or four guys at that position. So it gives us an opportunity to be able to use his strengths in some different ways and can add value to, to the offense. Since you mentioned the tight end group, let's talk about that. You've got three guys that had good springs and a class of very talented guys coming in. Do you expect to use that position differently this year? I really do. And I think that's a challenge that uh, I've kind of given to the offense and to Coach Denbrock in particular is really this next, you know, after recruiting and this next month and a half and through the summer, we got to really figure out, you know, what way we can enhance what we do by playing with at least two tight ends on the football field. And, you know, from from Josiah DeGar, who's played a lot of football for us, to Bruno LaBelle that, you know, is different than even it, than that. Um, to Huber, who, who has really had a good spring until he twisted his ankle, and bringing in Josh and Leonard Taylor, you know, gives us five, five uniquely different guys, uh, but I think really can add some value um, the more we can kind of integrate them into the things that we're doing. There are some interesting position changes on defense this spring. Brian Wright goes from defensive end to middle linebacker. Malik Clements goes from safety to that kind of hybrid linebacker position. Terrell Gilbert goes from safety to cornerback. Have they found their positions for this upcoming season, or are you just experimenting? You like to think so, but you know Brian Wright being one of those guys that unfortunately had a shoulder surgery that kind of limited him. Now he could do everything other than full contact. Uh, love what he brings. You know, you, you know exactly what you're looking for in that middle linebacker spot. And it, I'm not talking about size, speed, and tackle ability. I'm talking about the mind, the communication, the leadership skills. He has what it is that we're looking for. Um, now, just to get him into that live action, I'm excited to be able to see. But uh, <clears throat> I think that could really, really be a home for him. And I think in the future for him to continue to play the game of football, that's, hmm. you know, some type of backer uh, is best fit for his skills. Being a quarterback out of high school, he understands the football game. Um, Malik Clements was a guy that we moved from safety to what we're calling now the, our, our sniper position, which is a kind of a hybrid linebacker. Um, and to me, we, I actually, we gave him the MVP of spring just, uh, just last week at our little uh, Paul Pride dinner, uh, just in the way that he's handled himself and the way he's been thrust into the, a new spot and, and kind of grabbed it and ran with it and, and kind of really just kind of took off and you know, outran all the rest of the competition around him. Uh, had one of those springs that uh, you kind of just step back and say, wow, the maturity level of what he's done. And you know, even when you move that position to not be a starter, and then to work your way into that and really gain the respect of not only the coaching staff, but everybody around him. Um, really, really impressed with what he's done this spring. You lost three starting seniors off the offensive line last year. Were you able to identify your top five this spring? Well, that was the number one focus when we went into the spring. We had a 10 objectives as a staff, and the number one objective was to find the best five guys up front and make sure we're getting them and Billy to work together. Uh, I think we did. I mean, we settled in on a, a five. I think uh, we started to move them around a little bit in the second week. And, and I said, Look, hey, let's get back to making sure we know who those five we think are from the get-go. Get them working side by side to see how much more they can grow. So I feel really good about where they are um, with those positions because by nature, you know, if they really understand the, the game of football, the Garrett Campbells of the world can play left guard, can play center, can play right guard, can kick out the tackle if he needs – but we really got to find out in what spots those guys are. And uh, I think we settled in pretty good there at the end of spring. You've got your top receiver back in Khalil Lewis. Did somebody step up or did a couple of guys step up as the number two and three guys that can uh, join him? I'd like to say yes and see some more of that. Um, I think that's one of those ones that really this summer and fall camp is really going to have to telltale. 
And that'll determine a lot on what personnel you play on the field. Uh, Rashad Medeiros is a guy who really big time uh, earned the respect. You know, and not, I, not that we didn't think that, and I didn't know that last year. He's a guy that we were awarded, uh, was a walk-on, awarded uh, him with a scholarship this past week. Um, not that I try to remind, not that we awarded what he earned, uh, but had a really good spring. It might be that slot guy that we're looking for that can be a little bit different, but can also stick his nose in there and do the things we need to do. Um, and then there's a battle with, with some of those other spots with Geddes, and we moved around. And Malik Moj started to, you know, kind of shine a little bit with using his size and his abilities. So we're not positive just yet. I think that's one of those things coming out of the spring. I wish we had a little bit better grasp on, you know, with the two young kids and, and Trent Cloud, who really had a good spring, and Javon Haas, who showed a little bit last year. I think uh, we still got a little ways to go to figure out exactly who that next wide out or two will be or whether there'll be more tight ends. Inconsistent place kicking has been a problem for UC the last couple of years. You had a battle in the spring between Cole Smith, who's new, and Ryan Jones, who is back. Did either of those guys uh, become the leader in the clubhouse, so to speak? Well, I mean, if, if you really evaluate the last day of practice, and, and that was our kick scrimmage, I guess you would say Cole ended up winning it. And, and I think through the end of uh, spring ball, statistically and everything, Cole really kind of took a little bit of the head start. Um, but I, I think that was similar for, for Ryan last year in the spring. And I think and the greatest thing we could say is, hey, we're still going to allow you guys to compete and we're still going to allow you guys to push one another and we'll do that through fall camp. Best case scenario, you know, you do have one that kind of emerges and allows the other guy maybe to be a, a kickoff specialist, which now allows that guy to not, you know, have to focus on too many different things, especially if it's a freshman kicker. So, you know, I don't want to say which one, is which just yet, but the greatest thing we could have and, and we do think have is two guys that can do uh, two different jobs, which allows them to focus on their thing in particular. Last thing, the season begins with a road game at UCLA under new head coach Chip Kelly. Does that change your approach to training camp? No, I, I don't think it does. I mean, we, we still got to look at this as a big picture. Um, you know, at, at times you always said in the philosophies of the people I've been around as you train through training camp, you know, and that way those first three games, um, you know, sometimes maybe you're not completely back. But, you know, you really got to kind of evaluate how your training camp was last year, how you looked in those first three games. Not always, unfortunately, whether you won or not, but were the kids fast? Did they understand what they're doing? Were they healthy enough? Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll kind of spend a little time this summer with that, but I don't, the philosophy of different things and how much do we back off? No, because the unique thing is you're not going to know a whole lot about a whole lot about UCLA, to be honest with you, other than what they did in the spring. Um, so it'll be a little bit of that. Hey, let's. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of rolling the dice. Not exactly sure, um, but I know that with the travel and things like that, we got to be smart as well. Appreciate the time. Best of luck on the recruiting trail. Thank you. All right, that is Bearcats head coach Luke Fickle, and I'm Dan Horde for GoBearcats.com.